Hey y'all, I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I have an art journal process video for you. I am working in my Dina Wakely Blue Edition Media Journal, chugging through it. It is known for the fact that it has all of these different mediums. It has pressed paper and denim and burlap, all kinds of things to create on. And I am working through it and learning a lot from it. Today, I plan to do a double page spread on this pressed paper and denim, and I'm going to use my gel plates, which I haven't really gotten to use very much, so I'm excited to give them a try, and I'm going to give them a try with Distress Oxide Spray. So we will see what happens. We'll see how it goes. Um, I will put you all on fast forward. I will link everything that I end up using down below so you can check that out if you're interested. Um, heads up, those are affiliate links. They do not cost you any more, but they do go a long way to supporting this channel. So I appreciate when you are able to shop those. All right, let's go. Okay, here we go. I am going to try my best not to be pessimistic. This was a hard art journal process for me. It was, I had an idea and I knew what I wanted and maybe that was part of the problem. Sometimes with art journaling, it can be hard if you have an idea of what you want it to be. And this did not quite come out like I was hoping. I definitely learned some more. I will be happy when I finish this particular art journal and switch to a different medium. This pressed paper and the denim especially are just giving me all kinds of trouble and I am ready to work in something new, but I refuse to give up and not finish this art journal because I was so excited when it started and I just want to keep working in it. I think it's challenging. I think I'm learning things for sure. So I'm going to keep at it. I only have a few more spreads left to do in this one before I can switch over, um, which reminds me, if you have an art journal that you love, let me know down below in the comments because I will be looking for a new one probably by the end of May is what I'm hoping. Okay, so I started out with some stencil work with a couple of distress oxides. I was using the newest pink, which is that quiche flamingo. And then I'm adding in, I believe this is chip sapphire. And I wanted to bring in the color of the dark blue denim over to the left side, just along the edge, wearing the edge just a little bit. And now is going to be time for gel plates. So I've played with gel plates and acrylic paint before. I have not done it yet with these sprays. And so I thought I would give it a try. Um, it acts very similarly to the smush method. So if you are used to doing sprays, the brayer does nothing, by the way, so don't don't bother with the brayer. If you are used to doing sprays by um, putting them on some clear packaging and then smushing it onto your page, this is going to be very similar, except that it's not really going to travel outside the shape of your gel plate. So if that makes sense, you can see I have that large rectangle. Let's see how it does on the denim. I was actually pretty pleased with how it came out on the denim. I think over on that side, you could layer it over and over again, um, which would be really helpful. Something else that was helpful was using the brayer to press it down. So um, with the denim and with this pressed paper, you didn't get multiple images very easily because it definitely soaked in the spray right away. So here we go. This one is more of an ombre. I used, I'm using pinks and purples and it's pretty cool. Like I like how it's coming out. I think I should have done some more gel prints on this page. I think it would have been cool to kind of cover the entire part of the denim with the gel prints background just to add that dimension to it, but that's not what I did. So that's okay. We're going to go with it. I switched gel um, plates. I'm going with the circle now because I wanted to do something that felt like florals. And so I'm going to use these random circles across my page to be the basis of some flowers. So I'm changing up the pinks. I'm layering some different pinks on the page. What I ended up liking a lot was layering one one color like this with the flamingo and then coming again over the top with another color. I will still tell you that using these gel press um, 
items are super fun. It's super fun. You guys playing with the gel press is I'm all about it. I'm all over it. I love the set I got because I have different sizes that I can use. I am all about it. I would recommend it a thousand percent, especially if you are looking for kind of an injection of creativity into your normal scope of things. Get yourself a gel press, a gel print, whatever you call it. Um, get yourself one and have a good time with it. So I let that dry completely and now I'm coming back with a Posca paint pen and I'm going to just do some freehand florals, kind of roses, I guess you would say. Um, the Posca paint pen had trouble on the pressed paper here. It definitely um, was pulling the fuzz up, kind of messing with the nub of the pen, which I don't like. Like I said, I this has been a challenge, this journal, and it has challenged me creatively and I'm glad for that and I will be glad to try something new in the near future. So I'm just going to add a few florals here and there. Everywhere I put a circle, I'm coming back over the top to add the florals. And I'm still liking where everything is going. Like I said, I think where I went wrong was with I should have done more backgrounds with the gel plate. I just didn't do enough. I was getting anxious to um, move on with the art journal page and I should have spent a little bit more time doing the gel prints just as the background because I do like the effects that it came up with. I like the layering and I wish that I had played with it more. So next time that I do this, I most definitely will be more patient and more thorough for my background. I do end up filling in the background a little bit later so stay tuned but I have to work at it from kind of a funny place just because I've done a foreground thing so whenever I decide I need more background and yet I've already done things in the foreground it gets a, a little bit hairy at times so I do figure it out but you know it's a little troublesome. All right, here's my last floral. I like the florals on the page. I like the arrangement of them, actually. I think it's just random enough, if that makes sense, uh, to be interesting. And I do think it's kind of bringing the two pages together. The last touch for these drawings is actually going to be using my white Posca paint pen to add just a few highlights here and there. I also struggled with this a little bit on the denim and I think this paint pen is just running out because I have used up my Posca white paint pen. I love white paint pens. I would have a whole jar of white paint pens if I could. So just adding a few highlights, a little bit more interest to the florals here and then I will um, kind of move on and introduce a new color to this page. So I thought about just sketching in some leaves, but then decided to go a different direction. I'm using my gel press here, my gel plate, and covering up the florals so that I can add the spritz of Distress Oxide spray to act as the greenery in the background. So it worked pretty well. I'm actually kind of pleased that it worked like I thought it would work. I let that dry completely, and now I'm trying to work on what I wanted in the foreground. And I had this set of ephemera from Maggie Holmes. Um, I am trying to go through a ton of ephemera recently. I have a ton in my craft room, and I love it. And I I don't want to toss it out. So if I'm not going to toss it out, it's time to use it. So I opened up this new pack. Uh, this is the crepe paper. This might be heritage. I'll have to look it up to see if I can find. Um, and I left this part in. This is me fussing with all of the placement. And this is sped up four times as fast as normal, just to show you that when I'm working with layering and paper piecing, it does not all come together very quickly. I experiment, I move things around, I play with it. At some point though, you just have this to decide that it's it and start putting things down on paper. And that's what I did in this case. So I've pulled out my trusty Elmer's glue and I'm going to use it to place all these elements down. Um, I loved the little fawn right here and then the black and white, I think right here. So. I love how these pop off. I think the issue is connecting the two pages. So if you can tell, I have a big focal point with this cluster over on the right side, and then I will have another focal point with words over on the left side. And that's kind of competing for where your eye is going to go on this particular spread, um, which can be hard, which kind of makes it feel to me like two spreads, and I wanted them to come together a little bit more. So you could count it as two spreads, but I'll do my best to kind of unite them in just a bit. 
I'm using my Elmer's glue also for my vellum. That will make it curl if you just leave it alone. So what I'm gonna do is once I place it down where I like it, I'm gonna pull out a couple of old art journals and press them on top of these pages. And then I pull out my Cricut Maker and place that on top just so that everything is totally flat and I set a timer for five minutes just so it can set up. So I have my two journals and then some weight on the top, Cricut Maker, there you go. During the five minutes that I walked away, I thought about what I could do to bring the pages together. And one of my solutions is always using some dimensional gesso. So I used a heavy white gesso through a stencil. Um, I have pixie spray on the back of the stencil just so that it will stay in place. And I'm just going to use a old uh, hotel key card to spread some heavy gesso through this stencil. And what it does is add a little dimension. It brightens up the spread, which I like. This is what I was talking about earlier when I'm kind of working in what would be the background, but the way it's crossing over some of the florals, it's kind of coming from the background to the foreground. It's, it's an interesting take on it. And I do like it. I think it was the right way to go. It messes up the spread a little bit. Putting it on top of some of these ephemera pieces incorporates them a little bit more, which I like because when I'm using ephemera in my art journaling, I don't want it to just sit on top of the spread. That feels um, like I haven't incorporated it enough. So I do like using it and putting paint on top of it or other elements or adding texture beneath it. Something that brings it in a little bit more and having this repeated element across the two spreads also brings the two sides together in a way that I was um, really hoping for. So I started out with just some simple kind of a downward motion and then back up, but then I decided that there were some blank spots over here on the right side of the spread. So I just added some gesso to those spots as well. It does brighten it up a whole lot. I do like it more. I'm still not sure about the two focal points. That's still gonna be kind of an issue for me, but at this point it's already there and I'm not gonna peel them up. All right, some of the ending pieces here. I am using my Dina Wakely gloss spray to add some splatters. I use the pink and then I love this color, the gilt color, um, which is like this gold shimmer, which is super, super pretty. So I'm going to add that on as well. Once that is dry completely, the last thing I'll do is add a quote in that box. And it's actually just a quote that I made up because of how the spread is. It's kind of this dreamlike uh, collection of spring things. And so I'm adding the quote or adding a phrase that says, and just like that, she awoke and saw just how lovely life is. And that's it for this spread. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. I have linked all of the supplies down below. Heads up, those are affiliate links. So it doesn't cost you any more, but it does go a long way to supporting this channel. So thank you for shopping those. Um, a huge shout out to my YouTube members. I'm so excited about our growing community. We are having so much fun. If you want to find out more about the perks that my members receive, then make sure to click on that join button. I hope that you have a fabulous day. And as always, keep it creative. <laughs>